So let's summarize some of these terms that we've defined uh, in our calculation. So n total represents the total number of dead polymer molecules that are in our ensemble, and n naught represents the total number of polymerized monomers. This parameter beta represents the probability that a chain has experienced a propagation event versus a termination event. So it's useful to think of this here in terms of an experimental probability, and by that I mean we're counting events. So in other words, I flip a coin 50 times and I count how many times it comes up heads. I divide that number by the 50 coin flips, and that gives me an experimental probability as opposed to a theoretical probability, which I get from mathematical analysis of a distribution function or something like that. So I'm going to say that this parameter beta, the probability of propagation, is equal to this difference between the total number of polymerized monomers minus the number of dead polymers formed over the total number of polymerized monomers. So let's think about this. When I'm counting the total number of polymerized monomers, I'm actually counting events. So these monomers could be incorporated into an active chain, or they could be incorporated into a dead chain. So what I'm expressing here by this total number of polymerized monomers is the total number of events, the sum of propagation events and termination events. I'm counting all these possible outcomes that could have happened to a monomer that's incorporated into a chain, whether it's a growing chain or a dead chain. Now, if I subtract the number of dead polymers formed, I'm really subtracting termination events, because the only way that a dead chain can form is by experiencing a termination event, an active chain experiencing a termination event. So what I've really expressed here is the total sum of propagation plus termination events minus the number of termination events over the total number of events. So it's sort of a, it's expressing the same thing, the probability of propagation, but in more of an experimental framework. Now, let's see how we would apply this in the case of disproportionation termination. So the total number of polymerized monomers I've defined in terms of this term n naught. So that's n naught and the number of dead polymers formed is n total. So I can substitute these in, and I find that beta equals 1 minus n total over n naught. Now, what's cool is that I can solve this for n total in terms of n naught and beta. Because remember, n total is the thing that I'm having trouble calculating. So I get that n total equals n naught times 1 minus beta. Now let's look at the case of combination termination. And here we have to think about this a little bit more carefully because counting the number of dead molecules or dead polymers doesn't directly give us the number of termination events because two active chains now have combined to form each dead polymer. Remember in disproportionation termination, the number of dead polymers corresponds to the number of termination events because each dead polymer represents one active chain experiencing a termination event. Here, the number of termination events is actually twice the number of dead polymers, because each dead polymer was formed by the combination of two active chains. In other words, two active chains were consumed or experienced termination to form one dead polymer. So if we're counting termination events, then we need to use twice the number of dead polymers in our sample to accurately represent the number of termination events. That's the key point that we have to consider for combination termination. So when we do that, we have 2n total in the numerator, and then when we rearrange, we get an expression for n total. It's equal to n naught over 2 times 1 minus beta. So now we have an expression for n total, which was the remaining unknown that we needed to determine in order to calculate or obtain an expression for the weight average molecular weight.